Finding that you have fantastic music but no one's actually listening, you're not alone. Here are the three best ways to promote your music going into the new year. 2019 is coming to an end. I hope you've all had an amazing year for your music. It's been marketed well, you've got it out to a bigger audience, but what's happening in 2020? Is the techniques that we're giving, are they gonna still be effective? Which ones are most effective? Are some of them not gonna be effective at all? Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about that. I'm gonna prepare you for 2020 by giving you my three best promotional techniques for any artist that wants to succeed in the new year. It will guarantee that you're prepared for 2020 with the three best marketing techniques that you can possibly have to ensure you actually break through the noise, to ensure that your fan base actually grows, and to ensure that 2020 is a lot better than 2019. If you're not subscribed to this channel, you might be thinking, who are you to tell me how to market my music? Well, we're a marketing agency. Burstamo is a marketing agency which works with emerging artists on their debut release, but also major label artists. We create marketing strategies which work for artists to break through that noise, to get them heard, to grow their fan base. Our marketing efforts have had artists signed to major labels, signed to leading booking agencies, secure millions of streams. So these three techniques I'm going to tell you are what we do daily for artists and actually get results. And these three things, yes, they're working currently, but they're gonna be even bigger, even better in the new year which means you're gonna be on top of it. You're gonna be way ahead all of the other artists fighting to get heard. And it's definitely worth sticking around to the end because I'm going to speak about right at the end, the predictions for 2020, what's going to happen in the new year. And these aren't just opinions from me and the artists we've worked with. It's also opinions from marketing managers at major labels, leading booking agencies, streaming platforms, music industry professionals that we've spoken to directly. So definitely stick around to the end because I want you guys to know what these things are going to be so that you're on top of it. You're probably thinking, get into it already. What are these three things that are going to help my music succeed, help me get my music out to a bigger audience? So let's jump straight in. So the first thing, the one thing that's going to be a massive part of every artist's promotional strategy from the new year will be social media advertising. And the reason for this is because the organic reach currently on social media platforms is getting lower and lower every single day. And in 2020, it's going to be lowered even more. If you're looking at Facebook, Facebook pages used to be so key to an artist, but now the organic reach is around 2%. With Instagram, the organic reach used to be huge because posts would be chronological on someone's feed, but now it's not like that. It's all based on the algorithm. Obviously, we don't know what's going on inside Facebook, inside Instagram, inside of Snapchat, any of these places, but the truth is they're there to get money. And the best way to do this is through ads. So it's going to become more and more popular and people are gonna be fighting for that space a lot more. This doesn't mean you need a huge budget. What it does mean is every single artist needs to be using social media advertising, but they need to be using it in a smart, efficient way. We have had endless amounts of messages from artists saying that social media advertising doesn't work. It just isn't true. We've had insane engagement from social media advertising, which has led to tons of followers on socials, but more importantly, tons of engagement. And we haven't done this just by putting out a post of the artist's face, putting out a little snippet from the music video. It has to be creative. Before doing anything else, you need to know what your end goal is. You need to know whether you're doing these ads to get Instagram follows, to get streams, to get ticket sales. And this is key because you can't do all three of these things, a list of things via one ad. You need to know what that end goal is because the best thing to do on social media advertising is use a funnel. This funnel is so important because with brands, it takes about seven ads for someone to actually make a purchase. With music, that's gonna be even harder because you need to push the music without them even having the sound on sometimes. So that might be seven, it might be 10 times that you need to push an ad in front of someone. And that doesn't mean just one singular ad, that means different ads, but putting your brand across, putting those colors, that font, whatever it is that someone can recognize and grip onto. So the best method for this is a funnel. How this funnel is done is that right at the top of that funnel, it needs to be raising awareness. All you're doing is introducing yourself to a new audience. So that can't be too salesy. It needs to be something that adds value. And then everything in between the top bit and right at the bottom of that funnel just needs to be pushing and pushing and pushing towards that bottom of the funnel, which could be getting a follow on Instagram, which could be getting a stream. It sounds a lot of effort, but it does work. We've sold gig tickets through using this funnel. We've got Instagram follows, we've got streams. It does work because you're building a connection with that person. And you can see in the data how many people are engaging. So you can actually only retarget the people that are engaging. So you're not wasting your money. Before people start commenting that this is ridiculous, we should be able to just post on our fans 
fans see it. You've got to remember that these platforms are actually free. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all of them are free to use. So we can't complain that the organic reach is dropping. It's a free platform. So the fact that we even got it in the first place is fantastic. Technology is always going to change. You just have to adapt with it. And that doesn't mean spending thousands on ads. It just means using that funnel, being creative with it. And if you want a full video on how to create the funnel, what content you should use, how to do this effectively, cost effectively, then make sure to comment below Low because it's definitely something we'll cover. And if you're struggling with how to actually run an ad, don't be ashamed. We get a lot of people asking us how you do this. So Alex made a full tutorial, which I'll make sure to link below. The main thing to remember about all of these ads is they're not going to be effective if you're pushing people to something which isn't high quality. So if you're pushing people to Spotify and you've only got one song on there, then you're spending a lot of money on people just to stream one song. If you're pushing people to Instagram and there's basically no content on there, then that's a waste of money again. You need to have that platform populated. It needs to have that content on there, which leads me nicely into tip number two, which is content. If you subscribe to this channel, you will know a phrase we say very often, and that phrase is content is king. Content is king, and that will stay forever now. Yes, the platforms might change. Yes, people might move across to TikTok. People might move across to a new platform we haven't even seen yet, but it's always gonna be content. Everyone is always going to be engaging with that content and that content is how people are going to be speaking to artists, engaging with them, falling in love with them and the music. Because the best thing besides that is playing live and artists can't play live every single day. In 2020, content is going to be even more powerful because more artists are going to release music, more artists are going to create content, more artists are going to create high quality content, which you're going to be competing with. The latest stat from Spotify was that 40,000 tracks are uploaded to their platform every single day. So imagine what it's going to be like in 2020. You're going to be competing with tens of thousands of songs every single day, which means all of those artists are going to create Instagram profiles, they're going to create a Twitter profile, a TikTok profile, and you're going to be competing with them. So imagine you're ahead of the game and you've released so much content that the algorithm favors you hugely. Imagine you've got one piece of content which people are constantly coming back to. It constantly keeps coming up on people's Facebook timelines. And the only way that's going to happen is if you're creating good content consistently. The main part of content, the main reason it works is because it tells a story. It's so personal. For example, YouTube. There are tons of YouTubers doing the exact same content, but the people you subscribe to, you're subscribed to for a reason. You follow it because of their story. You fall in love with the story, you understand the story, and you have that relationship with the person. So as an artist, you need to tell that story. You need to take those people, those fans, the consumers, on that story with you. Take them on that journey. For plenty of artists, that story is just the story of them, how they've become an artist, how they want to get signed, or perhaps they've been signed already and they're taking the fans on that journey with them. But your story might be a lot more personal than that. Everything in your content should relate to your story. So Billie Eilish, simple things like her clothes. The clothes she wears represent her story. She wants to be able to be relatable for Gen Z. She wants to be able to get into the minds of them, speak like them, give them music which they can relate to. So what she does is she wears baggy clothes. She wears really stylish clothes, but they're baggy. They don't fit her well at all. It's always massive hoodies and tracksuits. And the reason she does this is because she feels like women in music are being sexualized and she never wants to be sexualized. She wants to be her own artist and people love her for the music. That in itself is a story. That's something that people want to hear more of and that's portrayed through her content. So find what your story is. You may not even be able to think of it. You may have to sit down, speak as a band, speak with your manager, speak with your friends who have been there from the beginning. Don't just focus on one platform as well because as we said with the previous tip about using social media ads, the reason you have to use ads is because the organic reach is dropping. But the more ads that are on a platform, the more the consumer gets frustrated and just wants to leave. So that could become the case with a lot of these platforms. People might stop using Facebook, people might stop using Instagram. And if that's the case and all your followers are on there, you're a little bit stuffed. So make sure you're on all of them, but some you'll probably be more natural with and you can put more effort into those. But once you've got that core audience, you need to make sure that you can bring them across to whatever platform you want. So you'll see plenty of YouTubers that are doing equally as well on Instagram or TikTok, and you should also do the same. Tip number three, the final tip, the final way that you can market your music going into the new year is having the perfect release strategy. A few of you might be thinking a release strategy isn't a way to promote your music, but in 2020 it is going to be because 
algorithms are gonna completely take over. Which means if you're not releasing your music correctly, then it's not gonna be getting the reach that it could be. And you're not gonna be able to promote it as well. Spotify's algorithm, Instagram's algorithm, YouTube's algorithm, all of these things impact your music release. And if you're not releasing in the most efficient way, then your music's not being put out to as many people as it can. So the best release strategy you can possibly follow in 2020 is releasing singles often. We would highly suggest releasing one single every other month. The reason for this is because this gives you time prior to the single release to promote it, to hype it up, and then actually after the release, have some time to push it out to your audience, get those streams, get that engagement, and then also start working on the next one. Plenty of you may think that this is a lot to deal with, that's a lot of songs, but Majority of artists want to release an album a year, so instead, just spread that out over singles. The reason this is so important is because the algorithm. Spotify favors artists who are populating their platform. So if you're putting out music, they're gonna love you, rather than artists that are releasing one project a year and then just hoping for the best. If you're releasing a single every other month, every month, then they'll be able to test it out more with their audiences. And the same with other platforms with your content. If you're putting out content on Instagram, on YouTube, the algorithm is going to favor you because you're keeping people on the platform for longer. With YouTube, there's always this rumor that it takes a hundred videos for you to fully, fully get pushed out by the algorithm. We didn't believe this at all. We thought it, it was just a bit of a rumor. No one has confirmed it. However, we got to our 110th video and in seven days, we grew over 10,000 subscribers because two of our videos got pushed out by the algorithm massively. Algorithms are fantastic for artists because it means that gatekeeper has disappeared. It's all down to the market. They decide whether the content is good. And if you're creating high quality music, high quality content, you're telling that story, you're being authentic, then the algorithm will always work in your favor. And if you want to understand more about the algorithm, specifically Spotify and YouTube, Alex has done a full video, which I'll make sure to link below. So now my predictions for 2020. And as I said at the beginning, these aren't just my personal predictions. I've based this on, yes, my own predictions, but also the artists we've worked with, watching their success, speaking to major labels, speaking to leading booking agencies, management, also speaking to the streaming platforms. So the conclusion I've come to is two things. The first thing is that algorithms are massively going to take over. And I think this is fantastic because as I just said, it means there's no gatekeeper. So if you're a good artist, these algorithms are gonna mean you smash it. Spotify's editors, there's only about 100 globally and dealing with 40,000 tracks being uploaded daily, it's just not doable. That algorithm is going to have to take more and more control, which means those editorial playlists, perhaps some of them are gonna be completely algorithmic, perhaps half and half, which they've started to to bring in more recently. Or perhaps they just start pulling them entirely and base all of the playlists on the algorithm. So it's just Discover Weekly, Release Radar. I guess we'll see, but I do genuinely believe that this algorithm for majority of platforms is going to get more powerful, take more control over the platform. The second thing, the final thing I've got to say in this video, and honestly, I love this, is TikTok. TikTok is only going to get bigger. Since last year, TikTok has seen growth of 500%. Their users, the money they're bringing in, the engagement, the amount of time spent on the platform, all of it's growing. People spend on average 52 minutes on TikTok a day compared to Facebook, which is 58 minutes. Facebook's been around for about 15 years, so that comparison is insane. People are calling TikTok the new Facebook. TikTok is only about two years old, and the growth it's seen in that time is phenomenal. And the more people coming onto the platform, the range of content has been amazing. It started off very much as a bit of a childish platform, just like Instagram Snapchat did. It was just young people playing around on the app, like they always do because children, the youth are more likely to be on these platforms, they're more tech savvy. But more recently, we've seen a lot of different content creators on the platform. We've got TV presenters, sportsmen, businesses, gamers, you name it, there's probably one of these creators on the platform and they're all using it in a different way. There's so much creative freedom with TikTok and the growth you see on there is fantastic because their algorithm right now is pretty simple. It's a bit like Spotify where they'll take your track, they'll put it out to an audience and test the reaction and if it does well, they'll push it out to more. That's the exact same with TikTok. The For You page is the home page when you open the app and if your TikTok is doing well, they'll keep pushing it out, keep pushing it out. And there have been plenty of people on TikTok which have gone viral overnight. I hope you found this video useful and if you did, make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't joined the community yet, make sure to subscribe. Hit the bell so you're notified when we upload and I'll see you soon with more music marketing. Bye.
your lips were made for mine I want you to come